Fine, let's uh, continue with the C1 is. So yesterday, we have seen the scatter plots, fine, line plot, histogram, KDE, agree? And then we also seen the heat plot, heat map, okay? And next we have something called as cluster map, fine? So, but this cluster map, uh, if I show you, yeah, it looks something like this, okay? But uh, see, for example, I will give, just give you a brief about uh, this one because uh, at this stage, you will not be able to understand it completely because for this to understand, you need to have a idea regarding the clustering, fine. So we will come back to this once we discuss the clustering algorithms, okay. But uh, just to give an idea over here, see here, we are uh, applying it on the Iris dataset. As you know, that uh, these are the four features in the Iris dataset. Now, when I apply the cluster map on this Iris data uh, dataset, see, this is a cluster map. That's right, fine. So basically, what it does is it will try to clustering, do the clustering, and clustering is what it is grouping. Okay. So clustering is what what does clustering does? It will do grouping, and how does it group? It group the similar items together. Okay similar points together okay so that's why if you see so these are the rows okay these are the rows of the uh, each row represents one flower okay and each of this flower has sepal length sepal width petal, sepal width petal length right so based upon the similarity for example see here oh it is having 5.1 Okay, some other flower which is very close to 5.1 will be grouped together along with this flower. Okay, and separate 3.5. Okay, some other flower which is like very much close to this 3.5 will be grouped along with this row. Okay, so like that, if you the only difference, uh, the way how you can understand here is see, I'll tell you quickly. For example, this is heat map, right? So over here, if you see, there are different variations in the color. I mean, see, over here it is uh, light, okay? But over here also it is somewhat light, okay? So over here it is dark, fine? And if you see, uh, over here it is somewhat uh, dark, okay? Here it is uh, light again, so something like that. But the one fundamental difference Oh, in the cluster map is in this box you can see mostly of the same color okay all dark all dark agree that means what that means what does this this row represent this row represent petal width okay petal width it, it represents and this color represents something near to uh, between 0 to 2 or 0 to 1 Okay, the starting point will be zero and this will be one. Okay, something zero to one will be this color. So it has grouped. Okay, this will represent all flowers with petal width between zero to one. Fine. So it has grouped in that way. Getting. And over here, this is petal length. Okay, so this is petal length where it is somewhere between two to three. Okay, so you can see almost similar color in each of the box which you see over here. Okay, you don't see you don't see over here a dark color again, a light color again, a dark color. It's not that way because the clustering algorithm internally a clustering algorithm runs when you run a uh, cluster map so all the sepal width of similar almost similar values will be grouped together okay same, same thing goes for sepal width sepal width and sepal length petal width petal width petal length okay so that's how it will be mapped okay and what you see over here what you see over here friend these structures are called dendrograms actually okay 
these are called dendrograms fine and this is a clustering terminology fine so as of now even if you don't understand uh, what i have mentioned what i have explained is also completely fine because you need to have understanding of the clustering algorithm okay then only you will be in a better position to understand okay but one thing you can understand and observe here is clustering basically does grouping of the given data okay and now over here it has grouped each column okay into uh, it, it is grouped in such a way that each of these column has similar values together okay so if you're able to understand that much it's fine as of now i would say but uh if you do not understand don't worry about this we will come back to this again okay cool so after that mainly we have uh categorical plot guys okay so these are important okay let's quickly study this okay so over here i'm going to uh, import two libraries load two libraries tips and iris okay you are aware of the tips and iris also you're aware okay fine so in categorical right so in categorical you have three different type of plots sub subcategorical categorical scatter categorical distribution categorical estimate plot okay so you already know scatter plot we have seen okay but in the categorical uh, uh, section you again have a uh, scatter plot so which is divided into two strip and swarm swarm okay in distribution we have seen box and while we have seen already seen box and there is a, some somewhat similar plot called violin okay and related to uh, estimation plot we have bar plot point count okay so let's see them quickly okay so let's start with the uh, strip plot fine so as you see it's a scatter plot but till now we have seen scatter plot with numerical features do you agree so when we see uh yeah so when you see the scatter plot so these are numerical features like total bill and tip okay so you are able to plot it on the numerical features but now over here if you see yeah so a basic scatter plot is yeah so yeah the one thing i need to mention over here so yesterday also uh, in yesterday session also we are always drawing any given graph in two ways okay that means what scatter plot can be drawn directly from seaborn sns dot scatter plot or it can also drawn from sns dot relation plot inside that you'll use kind equal scatter okay so when you draw as as i said in the initial uh yesterday's in the in the beginning of the session, I mentioned there are two types of functions, how you can draw the graph. So one is at the figure level, one in the axis level. Okay. When you, so now remember that when you draw a scatter plot directly from the Seaborn library itself, it's called at the axis level. Okay. It's called at the axis level. Drawing a graph directly from the Seaborn is at the axis level. Okay. Not only a scatter plot, any graph drawing from Seaborn directly, but if you, draw it from its category for example if, if you're drawing a scatter plot from relation plot using kind equal to scatter so then it becomes at the figure level okay so when you are okay when you are picking it from its category and using the kind parameter and running it it becomes at figure level okay but when you use the graph directly from the seaborn itself it will become at axis level both ways you will get the same graph okay but how the way how you draw them or use it from the sns library is a bit different okay is it clear guys same thing if you see for the histogram directly you can use it okay so this becomes access level fine but when you use it from the distribution plot it becomes figure level Is this clear, guys, the axis level and figure level point? Yes, sir. Okay. So now similarly, over here also for the categorical uh, section also. So when you use directly from the scatter plot, it becomes uh, at the axis level. Okay. So, but when you do it from the, uh, I'll show you. Yeah. When you do it from the categorical section. So what is the categorical section? So how you have 
okay for this histogram because it comes under the distribution plots okay you, you see here histogram comes under distribution plot so you, the way you can trigger this direct histogram or you can use a distribution category this plot okay then this becomes at the figure level similarly over here also uh, as you can see in categorical section you have swarm and also for example if i show the complete yeah so in categorical section we have strip plot okay swam plot okay etc uh, etc et fine so you can directly draw strip plot that becomes access or you can use a its section called as categorical cat plot then becomes figure level okay so if i just show you scatter plot directly this becomes access level and Okay, and in inside case scatter plot, what do we have? Yeah, strip plot and swarm plot, right? Yeah. So if you use a, a strip plot directly, it becomes access level. Okay, as you can see mentioned over here. But when you use it using the categorical plot and use kind equal to strip, that becomes figure level. Okay, fine. So now coming back, let's see the plots. Um, yeah. So the basic scatter plot. Uh, SNS or scatter plot it will give you this. Okay. That means what? So you're using two numerical functions, columns, total bill. You remember tips data sets? So if, you, if I give you a quick uh, review, okay. So this is a tips data set. This is a total bill. This is a tip, what they're given. Okay. So both the numerical features. So when, when you draw a scatter plot, Okay, so this is how it looks fine. But now coming to categorical section, so you can use one categorical column and one numerical column. Okay, one categorical column and one numerical column. Okay, but you might think we have already used it, but that's different. For example, if you see here, the way how we have used this, this is while plotting on the x-axis and y-axis, we have used both numerical features itself, but these markers, whatever, whatever the plotting over here, you see that you are, you are controlling using hue and style and size. Okay. Hue and size and style. Okay. But if you want to use, if you want to use directly X axis and Y axis as one categorical and one numerical, fine. So you might need to go for the strip plot. Okay, we need to go for the strip plot. But uh, if we are if we are plotting it over here, uh, not sure it will work or not. Just one second. Yeah, so it is you are able to uh, when you draw using the scatter plot, you are able to get uh, the graph. Okay, but I think when you do the strip plot, the graph is little better. Okay, that's what I can uh, observe over here. But direct scatter plot is also giving you with one categorical and one numerical. Okay, uh, but mostly I think the reason why they have they have uh, like introduced strip plot is specifically for categorical purpose because triple scatter plot we don't usually use for the uh, categorical features okay user usually scatter plot is mostly and always and always used for only numerical features okay but coming to categorical section so you have strip plot and where you have this categorical column called as day and day is either thursday friday saturday sunday and you are you want to draw the total bill okay and and also, I, I think that's the reason, as you can see over here, even though uh, it has plotted, it has given everything in the same color. Okay. But strip plot, which is specifically designed for the categorical section, it is able to give you in different colors. Okay. So we are, we are able to draw for Thursday, what is the total bill and what is its scatter plot. Okay. And Friday, this is the scatter plot and Saturday, Sunday. Okay. So Sunday, it is starting somewhere from 10 and it is going till 50, something like that. Is this clear, guys? Are you following? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. So now the, the same graph, 
Okay, the same graph, if you want to draw from the categorical section, I mean cat plot, uh, you need to do it in a similar way, which we have been doing from yesterday. Okay. SNS was cat, cat plot, same thing, but inside that you need to use kind equal to strip. Okay, kind equal to strip. Okay. So that is how you can draw a strip plot where one will be categor categorical column. Day is a category, categorical column. You understand? And but total will is numerical column. Fine. So that is how you draw it from the figure level. Okay. And obviously, yesterday we have seen once you know the basics, you can add so many parameters. So here also you can do the same thing. So you have SNS or cat plot. You're drawing data equal tips x equal to day. So till here we have seen, but you have you can also introduce Q parameter. Who is for what? Who is for the color coding, right? Based upon some other column. Okay. So here I'm using the six column. We have male and female. So I want to differentiate this uh, total bill. Okay. So for each day, because my x equal to day, okay, differentiate this plotting with the hue column. And here it will have for male and female. Okay. So you have male and female differentiated for each day. Fine. So you have for Sunday, this is the distribution of the total bill. And inside that blue is for the male and F is for the female. Okay. Fine. So similarly, you can also go for the style and also size, etc., etc. All those are applicable automatically. Okay, fine. So next thing we have something called as swarm plot. Okay. Uh, so over here, if you see, so we have seen. Okay. So over here, if you see, we have seen uh, strip plot. Fine. So next we have something called as swarm swarm plot. Okay. So see, swarm plot is exactly same as strip plot. Okay. The only difference. Okay, just for understanding, I have mentioned the difference. See, the swarm plot is a type of scatter plot that is used for representing categorical values. It is very similar to strip plot, but the only difference is you need it avoids the over overlapping of points. That's it. Okay, what does that mean? If you observe this graph, and if you observe this graph, for example, this graph, fine. So I, I'm plotting the day and total strip here. I'm draw I'm drawing the same day and total swarm. Only difference. Okay, so if I put these graphs uh, side by side, for example, okay, okay, just if you see this graph, okay, see this graph or this graph with the hue parameter or the basic graph, mostly you can observe there are some overlapping. You observe. See here, there, there, there is some overlapping. Fine. Here also the points are getting overlapped on top of each other. Okay. Here also on top of each other. Do you agree? Hmm? Yes, yeah, Santosh. Okay. There is some overlapping of the points. So in strip plot that happens, but just to avoid that, the swarm plot, in the swarm plot, it will not happen. So as you can see, no point is overlap. So they are just touching each other, but no overlap at all. See, no overlap. Everything is adjusted side by side. Okay. So it will make adjustments automatically to avoid the uh, overlapping. Okay. And it will give you the picture. Okay. That's the only difference between swarm plot and strip plot. So it just overlaps the, uh, avoids the overlapping. Okay. Nothing difference. Fine. So, and the same thing, you can also draw it from, uh, it's a figure level scatter cat plot kind equal to swamp, but at the access level, you can directly go for the swamp plot also. Okay. Fine. So next thing, yeah, same thing. You can also introduce few parameter in the swamp plot also. So here also you can click. Yeah. So here, I think when you introduce few parameter, then it is more useful, uh, the swamp plot, because, uh, if you do the, see here, here we have used the swamp plot, right? So, here there is some overlapping on uh, both blue and orange. Okay, here th there is some overlapping. Here there is much overlapping. This particular part. Okay, so to avoid that, if you you can if you go for the swam plot, you can see here there is no overlapping at all. Okay, there is no overlapping at all because if you see this is Saturday, right? So and this is twenty. Now this this line is twenty. So even if you put point over here also, here also everything is twenty, right? That is not making any difference because x axis x axis is categorical. If you are getting doubt, so how uh, Sandosh, how uh, it is adjusting? If it adjusts the positions, will there be any issue? 
you understand that the day this is categorical so saturday so from from here to here everything is saturday right so even if you, if you and this complete this line is for 20 right uh, amount 20 so even if you put here also that means saturday 20 here even if you put here also saturday 20 here also saturday 20 here also saturday 20 fine so instead of overlapping on top of each other it can use this space right so that's what the swamp plot is doing it's just using the the complete this particular category space same thing for thursday and friday sunday is it clear? Yeah, Sandosh. Clear. Okay, cool. Fine. So that's about the scatter plots, guys. So one one thing is the basic scatter plot between two cat two numerical features. Okay. For if you want to include categorical, so think about strip plot. Okay, and also swarm plot okay and the way how you run them directly access level figure level is simple fine and all the concepts which you have learned like hue size style will also automatically apply okay so that's about the swarm plot next thing you have from the distribution plots categorical distribution it's a box and violin so these are interesting and uh very helpful okay so now coming to box plot so i don't think this is new we have seen the box plot we understood the quantiles percentiles okay so if i quickly show you i think in the yeah over here fine so i understood what is a percentile fine zero percentile 25th 50 75th and 100 percentile agree so this is a we had a good discussion if you guys remember fine so we have the lower boundary upper boundary right so anything what is lower boundary q1 minus so what what are q1 q2 q3 q1 is a 25th percentile q2 is the median or also 50th percentile q3 is the 75th percentile okay apart from these three and apart from these three what, what do we have we also have minimum and maximum so but what is this minimum this is also called lower bound this is maximum is also called upper bound fine how do we get that once you have q1 q2 q3 you will have something called as iqr iqr is what iqr is here i mentioned Q3 minus Q1. Fine. So once you have you do Q3 minus Q1, you will get IQR. And based upon and based upon this IQR, you can easily calculate LB and UP, lower, lower bound and upper bound. What is this Q1 minus? This Q1 minus 1.5 into IQR. That is lower bound. And Q3 plus 1.5 into IQR is upper bound. Once you have these all these values, lower bound, Q1, median or Q2, Q3 upper bound these five values once you have then you can plot this box plot i mean box plot will itself give this or will uh, automatically calculate but this is also helpful to detect outlier also any value less than this lower bound or greater than this upper bound can be considered as an outlier okay so how what are these 25th percentile that means 25 percent of the values are less than this particular value Okay, so which we have already discussed in stat section, so I'm not going into depth, fine. So using this now we have, yeah, so this is a, the same graph over here, okay. So now if you draw, for example, if you draw SNS dot box plot data day, okay, x equal to day and total bill, okay. So each day or the total bill, find the same thing like uh, which we have drawn, okay, this over here, okay, if you observe, it is almost similar to the swim plot or the strip plot, but the only difference is it is the shape is different, okay. So for example, if you see in Thursday, so just even by looking at this also, you can uh, guess that these two looks like outliers, okay, here this one look like outliers, okay, here something like two, something like that, agree. So on Thursday two and Friday one, okay, similarly, if you see over here also, see there are some two or three outliers in the Thursday. Okay, and Friday there is one outlier. Okay, these are outliers. Agree? Okay? Because this upper, this, these are called whiskers, right? So this upper whisker is upper boundary and anything greater than that will be considered as an outlier. Okay, these are lower whiskers. Okay? Fine. So the same, the same, so the data which you have, so you can draw it, you can use the strip plot, swamp plot, but also you can draw it as so once once it is filters okay that tips data set okay the tips data when you filter on thursday 
and cons consider the total value, you'll, you'll have certain data. Okay, that data from that it is calculating Q1, Q2, Q3, lower bound, upper bound, and that's how it's plotting. Okay, so and these are the four values, and by looking, you can do understand what. So you can understand the on Sunday the uh, tip is starting from low and also it is going to the sorry, Saturday and going to the maximum. Okay. The maximum tip was uh, given on. See, as I said, as I said, outliers are not always uh, useless. Okay. It's just an outlier. That means it is not following the remaining pattern. Okay. So I also discussed that two things. One is noise. One is outlier. Okay. Noise is uh, like uh, unwanted data. Okay. Noise is unwanted. What is noise? So see in, in, in place of tips, okay, if everybody is giving like $10, $20, suddenly if the one guy gives $1,000, then this is outlier, okay? So it's not a unwanted data. It, it might be sometimes very useful data because who is this guy who is giving 1,000 rupees tip? Whether he's a billionaire, whether, whether he's an Elon Musk or what, okay? So you can think of that. But in case of tips in this data, if you see something like uh, some unwanted data, if, if you see a word called Apple, Fine, then this is noise because this, this doesn't make any sense. Fine. So, but this is an outlier. So, sometimes outliers are the actual data which uh, we might be looking for. Okay. So, over, over here also, if you see this, the topmost dot, okay, on Saturday is uh, around 50. Even though this is an outlier, but this is saying that on Saturday you are uh, getting the maximum tips. The highest tip was achieved on the Saturday. Okay. So, that might be useful information for the hotel management also okay because they might increase the services better on saturday so that they will get good tips okay and friday as you can see the tips are not that uh, uh the, the value is also not that great so they can think of some offers to attract more people okay something like that fine so but uh as you know this is the box plot which we have uh, discussed Okay, the same box plot, you can also do it from the categorical section. Okay, these are the access level because we are using at the box plot directly, but because you are using from the uh, categorical uh, section. So here you will use kind equal to box. Okay, you will get the same graph, but the different way of using. Is it clear, guys? Are you guys following? Yes, sir. Yes, Santosh. Okay. Yeah, because box plot we have already seen, right? So if you have any doubts, you can ask me, but uh, it's the same thing which we have uh, discussed, okay? So 25th, 50. And also if you see, what is this? This middle line in every box is the median, fine? Right? It's a median. So for Friday, you see the median, uh, yeah, I mean the 50th percentile, okay? The 50th percentile, is almost equal to the Thursday. Okay, Thursday. Fine. So that means 50% of the tips which are given on Thursday are almost equal to 50% of the tips which are given on the Friday. Okay. So, and Sunday, if you see Sunday, the median is the highest for Sunday. Okay. This is a bit lower, but this is at the highest. That means Majority of the tips, okay, the are received on the Sunday. I mean, I mean what? So fifty percentage of the values are greater than this value. Fine. So if you're getting, so this is median, right? That means what? Fifty percent of the values will be less than this. Fifty percent of the values will be greater than this. Fine. So fifty percent of the values will be greater than what is this value? Twenty. Okay. So 20 greater than 20 values, almost 50 percent of the people given 20 greater than 20 tip. Okay, so those type of observations and insights you can bring from this uh, box plot. Okay, so if you're having difficulty, I suggest you to once go back and revise this section or see this video which we have discussed. Okay, with an example, etc. etc. So it should be not difficult for you. Okay, fine. So after that, you have, you can also introduce Yahoo parameter. Fine. So the same box plot using the male and female uh, categories, you can also draw. So it will segregate from this Thursday box will be split into two box plots. Fine. 
male, female, male, female, male, female, male, female. Okay, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, cool. So, yeah, if it is for only one single column, so this is a box plot for only the total bill. Okay, without any categorical column. Okay, fine. So, I hope box plot is cool uh, with you guys. But next thing, next important thing is actually a new graph called as violin. Okay, so I think we have uh, seen the box plot. Okay, but now let's we need to understand something called as violin plot. Okay, this violin plot is, I think it's a new plot for you, but uh, internally it's not new. That means what? Violin is nothing but a combination of two graphs. One is box plot and other thing is KDE plot. Okay, so we have seen box plot just now and yesterday we have seen KDE plot. Now what is KDE? Kernel density estimation. Okay, so if I give you a recap. Uh, yeah, so these are KDE plots. Okay. So if you see the way we are drawn is sns.kd plot, okay, it's gives them. So the same graph, okay, so this this is a histogram, right? So if you do some estimation like this, just an outline sort of thing, so that becomes a KDE plot, okay? So fine, we also introduced Hue parameter and we have seen yesterday, okay? Now the violin plot, violin plot is just a combination of these. Now, what does that mean? So for example, if you see for day and total bill, Okay, day and total bill. Uh, for example, yeah. So if you see day and total bill, this is the box plot. Agree. This is a box plot for the day and total bill. After that, when you do the KDE plot, when you do the KDE plot, so this is a uh, for total bill. This is a KDE plot kernel density estimation. Fine. So and also here, if you uh, introduce the hue parameter. Okay, so here if you use a, for example, I will take till here. Okay. So I got uh, on day. Okay, so these are my KD plots. Okay, see, observe carefully. I'm using x equal to day, hue equal to day. Fine. So one thing is box plot and KDE. So first thing is only for the box plot, the graph looks like this. Okay. The graph looks like this. Agree. Now for the same total bill and on the day parameter, my KDE plot looks like this. That means what? For Thursday, this is my KDE plot. For Friday, this is my KDE plot. Saturday, this and Sunday, this. Okay. These are individual KDE plots. And above we have seen box plots okay now when you combine these two for each day because we are looking for each day x equal to day when i combine these two i'll get violin plot okay so that means what for example if you see the thursday this is a plot right so let me save image and Give me a second, guys. I'll zoom it and show you. Yeah. So if you see here, yeah. So if you see here, this whole thing is called violin plot. But here, what you see inside this part is box plot. Okay. And this one, this. This distribution is a KD plot. Okay. Actually, uh, it has invert, it has rotated like uh, to the horizontal uh, shape. Okay. Usually it will be like this, right? So, but if you tilt and see, this is the same KD plot. Okay. Same thing to the right and left you have. Okay. Same thing to the right side and left side. It applies. Okay. So, in violin plot, whatever the graph you see over here to the left side is the same graph. It is also to the right side. Okay, this both the same graphs. Okay, this is and these are KD plots. Okay, this is a KD plot for Friday, Saturday. This is a KD graph, KD plot. Inside this, this is a Saturday's box plot. Okay, so if you see now, for example, let me take Saturday. So Saturday box plot is this. Saturday box plot is this. Okay, 
for the day parameter and saturday uh, kd is what green color this one okay so that will be club together so this inside this will become box okay and this graph to the both side, this same kde will be applied top and bottom and the combined will become violin okay so not completely sure why it's called violin but yeah in some cases it might sometimes look like violin so if i just clean see violin um huh. the yeah the middle part okay the shape yeah so I think if you see this one, okay, and this one, yeah, some somewhat there's a similarity, the justification why they call it as a violin, okay. But did you get that? So box violin is the combination of box and KDE, okay. So it would not same concept which you learn individually if you club them that becomes violin but practically you know box plot will be much more helpful because violin for looking it might look uh, like interesting but practically i have uh, used box plot more than the violin plot okay violin plot it, you can get both at a at a stretch i mean at a shot you can get both kde and box plot but personally uh, i felt like using uh, KD separately and box separately and analyzing was more helpful. Okay, but there might be case where you might find violin just to look at uh, the the kernel densities. I would say distributions and also the box plot uh, both at a, at one shot. If you want to observe, then violin obviously will be helpful because see here you can also compare. Uh, you can increase the size obviously here the box plot is very uh, small, but you can increase and understand the medians percentiles outlier sort of thing okay and simultaneously you can also look at the distributions of the graph also okay whether how peak it is like uh like whether it is skewed right square or lips could both outliers distributions skewness you can get some idea that single and what some single graph okay but it's up to you if you want to go for individual box and kd is also fine but if you want to use violin is also fine okay but the way how you can use the violin at figure level is same thing as cat plot kind equal to violin okay day and total bill okay yeah so is this clear is uh do i understand violin plot yes sir any doubts still now anyone Okay, great, fine. So that's about the violin plot. Okay, nothing new to learn here. Only the uh, shape, how it's getting formed, you need to understand because the internal graphs are picked from other graphs. Okay, fine. So I hope that's clear. Okay, so similarly, you can apply any other hue parameters also. Fine, you can explore the hue, size, shape. Yeah, see here, we have applied the hue. For example, same the categor categorical plot, violin plot I'm using, okay? I'm also using the hue equal to six, male and female, okay? So same thing, how we have got individual bar graphs for male and female, here also you will have individual graphs for Thursday, for Thursday, for total bill, you have, when you have the filtered column, right? That value, first it will calculate the box plot, then it will also draw the KDE and it will club both that and then it, it and yeah before that it is segregating between male and female okay and for male you will have a box plot kd estimation for female box plot kd estimation and it will club here it will club here you will have a oil in here you will have a oil in here okay that's what happening over here this is male oil in plot inside that male data box plot and above this these these are male data kernel estimations female box plot female estimations for Thursday, it's only for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We hope that's clear. Okay. So next thing is, if you don't want, yeah. So if you don't want to, in here itself, if you don't want to go for two different graphs, okay, then what you can uh, do over here is, you can say split equal to true. Okay. So 
when you say what give me a second yeah so if you say speed if you don't mention the speed parameter so it, it is giving you two different graphs okay when you say split to that means split the same graph into two graphs so what it does is for thursday so one side it will be for the male kd okay for other side it will be for the female kd okay so for sunday if you see this side this kd is for the male okay male and this is for the female kd fine Cool. So, okay. So that you can use, use it for the split parameter. Fine. So after that's regarding the violin plot, guys. Okay. So after that, you have uh, the categorical section. You have something called estimate plot, bar plot, point plot, and count plot. Okay. Yeah. So let's try to see them. As you know, bar plot, it is uh, similar to what we have seen bar uh, graph so from sns bar plot okay x total hue smoker okay so it is drawing x equal to six male and female y total bill okay but you want to color code it with the smoker okay male smoker female smoker male fe smoker female smoker okay simple and over here so this uh yeah i would say the lines which you see over here right so there is a it is something related to um, confidence intervals okay over here if you see when there are multiple observations in each carry it also uses bootstrapping to compute a confidence interval around the estimate which is plotted using error error bars okay so this is related to confidence interval okay so as of now you can ignore that okay so because uh, we have never used uh, with these lines okay so as of now let's ignore this okay but if it if, if i feel that if it if it is getting really important in our email section so don't worry i will uh, explain you what is this okay but just understand as of now what is the bar plot and how we are able to draw this okay but just in case if you want to get rid of this the the way how you can do is ci ci stands for conference interval okay so but if you're interested you can go for this and you can uh go for the yeah bar plot so you have uh error bar ci okay so these are all the different categories fine so if you do ci equal to none that means conference interval. no if you don't want to consider any conference intervals okay so you can it will it will give the plain bar graph after the, that, that, that's the only thing related to the bar graph, the bar plot, guys. Okay, the same bar graph, what, what we have studied. Okay, similar to the similar to that, but in the categorical section. Okay, so here we are having categories, and these are the few parameter. Coming to point plot, point plot is a bit uh, new thing, I would say. Over here, if you see, over here, if you see, I'm saying data equal to tips. Okay, x equal to six, y equal to total bill. Okay, u equal to smoker, etc. Now it is saying with this. Now, what does this mean? Okay, just focus here. What it is trying to say is the same thing. See, same graph. This is the same graph. X, Y, Q parameter, what I'm taking, everything is same. Here also it is same. Same thing. See? Same thing. Only difference here I'm saying bar plot, here I'm saying point plot. Point plot, what it, what it does is, it will just, as the name, so it will just give you the points. Okay, but what are these points? We'll see. The same bar plot, it will just remove these bars and it will give you the points. And what is this points? For example, if you see, for the blue color is for smoker. Okay. And it is starting from over here to here. That means what? From about 22 to 18. Okay. So the same thing over here. So if you see here, this 20, 21, this will be 22. Okay. So it will it is putting a point over here, okay, and that is for the male, okay, male smoker, and this is for the female smoker. So this is around some eighteen, agree. Okay? So it is just pointing these two, okay, and similarly for the female 
sorry, male non-smoker, female non-smoker. So this is, it will put a point over here, it will put a point over here and it will join these two. Getting, instead of bar plots, it will just denote by points, okay? This is a point, this is a point, this is a point, this is a point. It will join these two, sorry. It will join these two points for female, uh, no, for the smoker. And this is for the, sorry, something like this. This is for the non-smoker. Okay. Getting guys. Following, not following. Hmm? Okay, because see here the scale is different. If you think the, the lines are a uh, bit different, here the scale is different because here 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Okay, but here it's like 15, 20. So that's why when I when I show you the example, so the shape what I got is little, this is little slant. Okay, so but here the scale is different, but you, you need to observe. It is starting from around 22 to something around 18. So that line is getting joined, okay, from 22 to something 18. Agree? And for the non smokers, it is around uh, just below 20 to just almost similar to this, this particular line. Okay? See, both are very nearby. Okay? Understand it that way. Okay? And here starting point is just below 20. Okay? So here just below 20, it's starting and till here. Okay? So this is regarding the point plot. Okay. This is the point plot. Just it is denoting with respect to points. If you don't want the bars. Okay. So yeah. So that's about the bar plot and the point plot. Okay. And next thing is count plot. Count plot is very simple and very uh, uh, like useful. Okay. You mostly we have used many times coin plot it is very very simple what does it do for it will just give you the count okay so the tips x sex male female this you understand so it, it will just count as a name suggests, it will just count in male section what is the count okay how many people are male are there okay female how many female are there okay so this count plot is very important because in the classification algorithm first thing we'll do is a count because for example uh, when you are trying to predict Okay, uh, predict into some, uh, for example, if you take the set, uh, Iris example only, okay, Setosa, Versinica and Verzi, uh, Versicolor and Verzinica you have, right? So you have, you have these three output, three uh, output categories, okay? So the data, first of all, you should know how many, what is the count of each of these, right? Because if it all, if the data says overall there are thousand values, okay? But what is the contribution from each of this? What is the share of each of these in thousand? Okay, because if you have this one 990, 998 and the this is one, this is one, still the value is 1000, but this doesn't make any uh, sense, right? Because it is completely versicular because with one record, what it what will train? Agree? Are you guys getting? Even if it is 10, 10 and uh, even if it is like 980 also, this will not make uh, any use. Fine? Because this data set will be heavily influenced by this particular category because there is no enough records from the other category for the model to get trained upon. Are you guys getting? Yes, uh, from the output category I'm speaking upon for the iris data set. Fine. So over here in the, uh, if I see, show you the iris data set, where is iris, where is iris, where is iris. <laughs> oh, not f uh, yeah, this one, iris data set, if you see, output category is what? These are all input, sepal width, sepal length, output is species. Output is species. Now in species, what are the three categories you have? Setosa, Virginica, and you have something called as Versi color. Agree? Three categories you are having. Okay. If at all, see here you, you have the data set, you can print it and uh, check it. But I'm just saying 
in case if someone has given you data set and there are three output categories category one category two and category three okay and if you say overall there are thousand uh values thousand rows fine so but you should also know what is the count of each of this category right because ultimately you are training the model what what is our uh, main concept of training model that means once you give the input these four inputs the model should tell whether it is setosa versinica or vegicolor fine that is the reason that like what we are doing all this fine to so train a model so that when given this input set of these four values it should predict in the output so first of all to predict the output it should first get trained right so to, to get trained it should have enough number of records fine so I'm saying just in some free case, if you have a whole 998 of category two and these are only one and one. Now, whatever input you give, the model will predict only C2. Fine, even if you give this record, which is actual setosa, but even if you give this to this record to model, which is trained upon this data, okay, still it will give you the output as C2. That means C2 is not setosa. Let's say it is some virginica. This setosa is particular because the model has not seen setosa itself because it is only one record and it is not at all enough for it to understand the pattern fine so obviously this will fail the model will fail in, in the classification and why it is done that because you don't have enough records and how you will know what is the count of each category by using count plot getting is No, okay. Tell me where you don't understand. I'll repeat. No problem. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't understand anything at all. Do you the count plot example? Yes, I repeat count plot again. Yeah. See, guys, count plot, count plot is what? Count plot is giving you the count of the particular category. Okay. So that means in this tips data set, in this tips data set, what is the total count of male and what is the total count of female? That's it. Nothing more. Nothing more. So if you see in the tips data set, Oh, where is tips? Yeah, in this tips data set, what is the count of, see total there are 244 rows. In this, what is the count of male and female? That's it, that's what it is giving you. Okay, so if you see, uh, we have seen tips of, let's start, value counts, right? So male 157, female 87. Agree? Out of this 244, male are 157 and female are 87. This value it is plotting. See, this is just 157. This is 87. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so fine. If you understand this, that's fine. Okay, if you are getting confused with that, okay. But the earlier example, what I was saying here is see, earlier example, what I'm saying here is for example, take this example because there are male and female. Okay, so if you in the same, same example, okay, if you have the female female has only the female count is here what 87 something and this is some 157 okay for example then you can see okay there are some decent amount of uh, male and female okay then it is fine you can use this column okay but if the female column is just this for example this orange is not this it is just this that means what the female the count of female is just less than 10 
fine so then will this sex column will be useful no because this is heavily dominated by male getting heavily dominated by male fine so even though there are few female that that is not enough okay even if you consider also it will not it will not not make any effect even if you don't consider also it is not going to make any effect okay so what i'm trying to express here is just to know just to know what is the count of each category in a given column okay in a given column okay so count plot will be very helpful okay so understand that much is enough as of now okay so just understand to to know the count of each individual category in a given column fine so understanding that is enough okay so if it's, if you're getting confused don't go into depth okay so it, the count plot basic purpose is just give the count of each given category in a column okay fine so because once we are uh, discussing about the actual prediction using the iris data set then i will show you what is the actual significance i was talking about like how the count plot will uh, is helpful in calculating the count of the output category that is a species column okay but as of now don't worry about it so but i hope you understood the count plot okay the same count plot you can also split it using the hue parameter okay the i want to know the count but on the what on what okay on each so for the male what is for thursday friday saturday sunday this is a count and for female see for female around 33 people visited female and around 10 female visited on uh on this friday this for thursday saturday sunday getting this understood this few parameter yes sir okay so uh, you can also interchange i think the interchanging might be uh okay I want, if it is day so i want to see for each day how many what, what are the visitors so this is more helpful okay so for thursday see for thursday almost equal friday almost equal but saturday most of the uh, ladies stayed at home, but uh, male, they came to restaurant, okay? Sunday also, fine, okay? This is more helpful because on Saturday, Sunday, you can see huge increase in male uh, entries, okay? But on Friday, more or less same. Thursday also, Thursday actually, female is more, male is less, okay? So what are these? These are counts, the actual count, when you filter it, the actual counts, okay? So that's regarding the count plot, guys. Okay. So this is a one more little parameter. Fine. So the same. Uh, yeah. After that, you have. Uh, oh, we have point plot. Oh, uh, what is this? Yeah. Just have one last example. So we have also seen this example right so uh categorical plot what, what we're doing categorical plot tips data set six total bill okay uh kind of called box we are drawing the box plot but here if you see we are using two columns one is a column one is a row i think you uh, you remember this we have this, uh, seen in the last previous to previous section fine that means what in columns you want smoker category smoker column because call equal to smoker but in row you would go for the time okay so in column you are smoker that means smoker will have two categories a smoker and no smoker so it will be considering that but in the rows it is time time is having lunch and uh, dinner so time is in uh, it will be having lunch and dinner okay so this is this will be lunch and this will be dinner okay so these intersections will be combinations of this that means lunch is lunch no dinner is dinner no okay like that so that's why if you see here this lunch yes lunch no lunch lunch yes lunch no that means what time lunch smoker yes lunch smoker no okay similarly for dinner yes dinner no and the appropriate data will be filtered based upon this combination okay simple filtering operation and that data we are plotting it using and and that data you are plotting the total bill fine you are plotting total bill and also you are segregating on male and female because x is six this is for male this is for female getting this same concept which we discussed earlier see this is for male this is for female so this particular is the box plot why box plot because we are drawing the kind equal to box fine this is a box plot for 
the male category and who has visited for lunch and who did not smoke. So first it will apply these conditions, time equal to lunch, smoke equal to no, and the category equal to M, it will have a separate data. That data, it is plotting the box plot. Similarly for female. Is it clear guys? Yes, sir. Clear. So, fine. So, is it getting late? Uh, for guess. No, it's not getting late. Okay, great. Let's continue then. Yes, sir. It's getting late. Okay, fine. So, so we have seen, uh, yeah, so today we have seen this section, okay, categorical section. So I won't think any difficulties we had. So just to give a recap, okay. So we had scatter plot, swim plot, okay, swim plot, box plot, and KD estimations combined volume plot, okay. And then coming to bar plot, okay. So, and uh, point plot, okay, and count plot. Complot with hue parameter, complot with hue parameter. Okay. And this is the bar plot, but along with the column and row categories. Okay. And that's all. And actually, uh, I want to discuss regression plots also, but we don't have uh, enough time. So fine. Tomorrow we'll discuss uh, regression section. So this is, as of now, this is not that helpful, guys, because you did not start the classification algorithms, etc., etc. So you have one more section actually called as regression plots. Okay. But we'll see, we'll give you an overview, but uh, I think we have we have covered this bar plot, okay? We have covered bar plot, count plot, box plot, violin plot, swarm plot, along with we have also considered strip plot, okay? Etc, um, etc, et okay? Fine. So tomorrow mainly we will be focusing on the multi-plot. Uh, over here we have joint plot and pair plot. And also I will give you an overview of the regression plot, fine? With that, we are going to conclude uh, Seabond tomorrow, okay? and uh, tomorrow tomorrow wednesday and from thursday we are going to start on the actual ml basics okay fine guys so that's all from my end uh hope you understood so or else go through the session once and let me know the doubts fine take care guys let's meet tomorrow bye